they're watching this program tonight, I want you to reach way down in your spirit and grab a hold to your faith. Because sick bodies are going to be healed. Somebody's going to be delivered. Mother, your prayers are not in vain. Victory is already yours because he's holy. He's holy. Come on in this audience, turn one to another and cry, he's holy. Right there in your living room, you can honestly say, because I know it as a witness, that the glory of the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, Shaya. I speak peace. Oh, just turn around and touch your neighbor here tonight and say, peace, be still. Oh, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know what that person is going through tonight. Don't just say it just to be saying it. You don't know what you're prophesying to somebody. Tell them the Holy Ghost said, peace, be still. Because we're in the presence of the Lord. Wow, we can get stuck there all night long. But I'm so excited to have our next guest, Dr. Swenson, with us. And before I even allow her to attempt to go into uh, just her awesome experience with her family and the Lord, she, many people don't know this, but she is the mother of my administrator, Tanya Hall. This is her mother. And I want to thank you. 
for the birthing of your daughter. She has been a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. Come on, TBN family, put your hands together and welcome Dr. Johnny Mae Swinson. I bless you. Amen. Well, Dr. Swinson, I, I don't want to waste any time with this. I want to go right into, um, there are some specific questions that I want to ask that I, I really feel that the body of Christ is going to be blessed tonight um, by such an awesome testimony. I want to go back to, uh, you were, uh, are the mother of Tanya and, and Rod, and you have a son also that's, that's serving in uh, right. Iraq now, right. Right. and uh, uh, in the Michael. military, yes. Michael. Yes, that's the Michael that we've been just yes, just bombarding heaven about. Yes. the Michael that's gonna <laughs> preach in case he watches. That's right. Over there in Iraq, you gonna preach? That's all your right. friends, you busted out now. <laughs> they all know there's a preacher yes. down in you. Yes. <laughs> so you uh, raised your children. Um, I was told you were one of those. Uh, uh, Cleaver families, Beaver the Cleaver families, that uh, <laughs> kind of, because you know, we don't know nothing about it. At that time, we were watching PTL, but you were actually taking your family yes. to PTL during the summer right. on summer vacations yes. and staying not in the hotel part, but in the cabin part where there was no television and all of that. You know, what was that whole concept about? I mean, what was it that steered you in that direction? with your children? Well, it's important to, for children to know the power and the release of the things that God placed inside of them. Mm -hmm. And many times, if they have mimicking, if they can see someone or in television, on television or whatever, sometimes they adapt those personalities. But sometimes when you pull them away from the extras, and allow the 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 actual what God placed in them. Wow. Because Genesis 128 tells us that God empowered us. Mm -hmm. He blessed us and he empowered us with a fivefold charge. Wow. And, it, and it's our responsibility to acknowledge the fact that he told us to be fruitful, yes. to multiply, to replenish, yes. to to subdue and yes. to have dominion. Yes. And you can't teach that uh, uh, by, by just picking up uh, things and showing them. It has to be something that's on the inside of them. And they individually need to know that they are fruitful. So part of the thing that we really pushed with our children, all of them, they were individuals. Right. There was never, uh, I, I personally did not have a favorite. What, whoever needed me at the time that they needed me mm -hmm. is, 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 is where I was. Right. If, 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 if Michael needed me in, in such a way and that the other two did not, then I was all whatever Michael needed. Then now, I, now, Mother, Tanya said this to me, that uh, based upon what you're just saying, not only did you... Um, minister to the need of that particular individual, but you began to teach your children at an early age to get involved with the crises of that individual. Yes. You didn't allow them to become, Tanya said, isolated no. from the struggles of their brother or their sister. No. You made them a part of that. Right. What, what they had to be a part because it, with our family, if one hurt, then all of us hurt. Right. And, 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 and the way... The way we really, and I think the way we really was able to implement that is that when one had a success, all of us had a success. And, and we, we would zero in. My, my husband was really one that he supported the children in whatever they were doing. Right. So if, if, if Tanya had uh, something at PTA or where we just all, we went, all of us she went. Was, she was really almost... Um, a part of the WNBA, I heard yes. that Tanya was an awesome, awesome basketball player. Yeah, both of them were Michael and Tanya. Uh, they were both uh, captains of their team in high school. Uh, Tanya was a what you might call a Swenson-made player. 
because <laughs> Tanya did not have what it took to uh, be a player, but because my husband is such an avid teacher of basketball, mm -hmm. he took her left hand and she, he taught her how to follow through, to do the things. So there were principles taught in the, on, the basketball, uh, on the basketball court. So when even the children had other children that would come around, uh, we fed them, we took them to the games, and my husband coached Little League. So we just believe that there are principles of God that you can place anywhere. Okay. Uh, uh, whatever you're doing. I, I, I've been asked the question, well, Mother, do you see, because uh, I always use illustrations involving God. And they said, well, do you see God in everything? I see him in everything. Mm -hmm. I see him in everything. When I go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and there is something that's marked down, God did that for me because he knew I was going there. <laughs> so I, I see it. Now, now, that's an awesome principle. And the reason why I say that is because I had to just kind of dig back into the background a little bit because I think people need yes. to understand that uh, there is a principle involved. We're so busy trying to embrace um, the spirit of the Lord and ignore the principle yes. Yes. by which the word works. Yes. Now, your principle and your foundation was, you know, uh, I heard your husband say, we would go to a game, I think you all led, uh, you were uh, I coached. coaching yourself. I coached. You led uh, your team seven years in a row to championship time, you told me, and, and, and you all were always winners. Dr. Swenson, your husband was saying also that um, he would always tell his children, you can't lose because your last name is Swenson and right. win He's is in already your name. in your name. That's right. That, 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 That's that, right. That was powerful. That's right. So there was a situation that, and I want to bring it up to this point, yes. that occurred in your life when Tanya told me that she went into um, the bedroom by accident of your youngest son, and now Prophet Rod, who's the pastor of your church. Right. And she saw that he had a hole in his arm, and mm -hmm. she came and told you. Right. Long story short, this ended up being um, terminal cancer. Yes. And... Tanya said to me, and this is why I, I, I wanted to, to, to have you today, because I want you to help other mothers understand the power of standing in the gap. Yes. Uh, Tanya said, when you saw the cancer and you all took him to the hospital and the doctors diagnosed him, mm -hmm. she said that she ran into the bathroom and she began to cry and you began to cry. And yes. she said, then you said... Here's some tissue. This is the last time we're going to cry. That's right. Because it's time now to, to go to God. battle. That's right. Tell That's us right. about that. That's right. Come on, mother. Tell us about one that. Of the things, one of the things that we must realize is that our God will never leave us without an answer. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it looks like it is hopeless. Ah. He will never leave us without an answer because he placed an answer in us mm. long before we ever had flesh to cover this body. He placed an answer in us because when he told us to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, have, divi have dominion, yes, that's take charge. Yes. I didn't have, we didn't have a body to house that yes. when he gave it. Mm. So he didn't give it to our bodies so our bodies have nothing to do with what's inside. So what we have to realize is, is that he gave it to us in our spirit. Yes. And in our spirit, we are much bigger mm. than what we look like we're sitting here. Come on, brother, come on. So what we have to realize is that when he gave dominion, which is a principle yes. of taking charge of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way you can take charge, you got to have some weapons. Yes. You can't just walk up and just take charge. Yes. Well, all along, I never believed in buying just toys, cap guns and, and just little dolls. And I just never believed in buying a lot of little toys. Mm -hmm. So the children always got from me educational or scriptural toys. Mm -hmm. So that the principle of the word would be in them from just a scrabble game. Yes. So 
when you get a word like that in your infancy, uh, then when it's time to meet the devil, come on, mother. Then you can you can actually put Psalm 127 into effect. That those children will be arrows ah. in the enemy's gate. Come on, mother. And I knew Rod, Rod was, a, he, he was different. He has a phlegmatic kind of personality. And he was quite different. But because he and I would be at odds with each other because he was a late bloomer. Yes. So there was something different about him. So when this thing hit him, mm. God said, that he was going to be a winner. Yes. So in order to do that, God already has given him the end of his life. He's got to walk through it. The mere fact that he has the end of his life, and if he tells me that he's a winner, that means between here and there, he cannot die. Uh. He cannot die. Come on, mother. Because... His destiny is wrapped up in God. Come on. And since his destiny is in God, all we got to do is the battle is really not ours. Mm -hmm. The battle is the Lord's. But we must show up. We got to show up. Come on, mother. So in between here and there, we just showed up. Yes. We stood in faith. We believed God. I stepped into the hospital room every day. And I read scriptures to fill the atmosphere with God's word. Come on, mother. I said to the doctor, if you got a word for him, and it's not something that's going to encourage him, and it's going to be something that is negative, then you can't give it in here. Mm. I'll step outside the, the room, you give the word to me, and we'll pray about it, we'll go back in the room. Come on, mother. Because if God says that he is to be whatever he is to be and a mother has to know that <laughs> you got to know that the fruit of your womb ha, check it out almost. the fruit of the womb you got to know that you're fruitful when you don't know you're fruitful come on mother you got to know that you can multiply when you don't know you can and God knows you got to know that you can take dominion. Come on, mother. And we just took dominion. You took it. When we walked, when I walked in there the day before they administered chemotherapy, and I saw a knot on his neck that was like an egg. And Rod was just lying there. Every day the temperature was 105. We're standing in the balance. My husband went back to work and I stayed there every day. And whenever the doctor said, you know, Miss Swenson, I think he might know what's going on. I said, well, God, as to what he knows, whatever we need to do now, we need to do that. So we stood in faith. Yes, God. We filled the room with the word of God. Now, let me tell you something. Everything else may go down, but the word of God cannot. And somehow, I knew that just like Abraham did, that when God, whenever he went up on the mount with Isaac, come on, mother, he said, now y'all stay down here with the asses, but me and the lad, we're going yonder, and the Bible says, we will be back. had to know that if when he made a statement a prophetic statement that says we will be back that means that God if you're going to kill him up here then somewhere you got to raise him up well I believe God so somehow if, if my son is to be a prophet Yes, yes. If my son is to preach. Yes, yes, yes. If my son is to be a father. Yes. God, if you allow him to die, you must be going to raise him. You must be going to raise him. Because he cannot die. Cannot. Because he was 
already consecrated before the foundation of the world. Because what we have to understand is that God said that he had already created us before. He said, I chose you before the foundation of the earth. So that lets me know that my mom and dad just had to get together to be a vehicle, but they didn't choose my destiny. I was already there. I was already chosen. And since I was already chosen, then God had already given me an assignment. God doesn't mess around with assignments. So when he gives an assignment, yes, yes. then he is obligated to bring it to pass. Come on. I don't have to bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. So to mothers, if you believe something about your child, even though they look like they're going crazy, they're going this way and that way, you can, you can just get rid of all of the excess baggage. You got to zero in and see the jewel. You got to see what God has put in them. And that's what you pray for. I, I, I don't pray. I don't pray that, that, that you will excel in basketball. I don't pray that you will excel in these things. But I do pray that the gift yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that God put in you yes. will come forth. Yes. So I got to do Oh God. I got to do what the midwives Come on, in Exodus 1 did. What they did. When the authorities said that if it's a man child, you need to destroy it. Yes. Now you want to save the women because you see they want to use the women later on to tear down the man. Yeah. But he said, I want you to say, I want you to destroy the man child. You got to be careful that the Lord, <laughs> God is so he is so strategic in this because he will establish a fear and a love in you that you will go beyond whatever the authorities say. So those midwives said that, he said, the authorities say, every man child, kill it. And because, the Bible says, because they feared God. Come on, mother. <laughs> they didn't kill the man child. When you fear God, Yes. That means when you reverence him. Yes. When you reverence God, you can stand in the devil's face and let the devil know that my God said it and it's got to come to pass. It's got to come to pass. It's got to come to pass. This same son, Rod just said to me, he said, Mama, after her, all of the ordeal that we went through, he said, Mama, what's going to happen to my life? I said, Son, your life is like all of ours. God is in control. And just like my life is in his hands right now, your life right now, son, is in his hands. He said, But I wanted to get married. I wanted to have children. And I said, son, if God says it, then you will. So we had to stand in faith, and he married a beautiful young lady. Marie was one that she would come in and give me rest. She would come to the hospital and stay and let me go home. And he married this beautiful young lady with for 10 cancer. Years. With yes. cancer. With cancer. They were not married. <laughs> <laughs> they were not married. He had cancer, and she left college, came to the hospital, and sat with him with cancer. So that means whoever you marry has got to see your destiny, yes, sir. regardless yes. of what it looked like. Yes, yes. So, for 10 years, woo, we stood in faith, and we believed God for his dream to come to pass. And he's a man of faith. And he's believed God. But early one morning, I was sitting in the office. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you healed him of cancer. You caused him to find a beautiful young lady for a wife. 
Now, God, I know that you can't fail, and I know that you got all things in your hand. I sat there, prophetess, and I just began to weep, but I, I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do this, but I need you to let a sperm find an egg in Marie. I said, now, I know with chemotherapy, they say it's supposed to destroy. <laughs> it goes against nature to destroy the reproductive cells. But my God works outside of nature. Come on, come on, mama. So I said, I just need you to, to I just need you to do that. And I just stood in faith and believed it. <laughs> Me and Rob, we have just believed it. And one morning, <laughs> Rob called me. He said, Mama, you know Marie took the pregnancy test. He said, and it looks like it's it's positive, he said, but we're going to go to the doctor, he said, but you know what, Mama, I said, yeah, I know. We believe God. We believe God. Well, to make a long story short, God did what we asked because Zach is eight months old now. He's over here. Zach is in the building. He's in the building. Yes. Zach came through cancer. Whoop. Supposed to be, uh, 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 I mean, a reproductive organ and everything supposed to be dead. But my God, my God, knows how to resurrect not just a natural body, but God knows how to resurrect wounded spirits. Yes. God knows how to resurrect wounded minds. So if you got a wound today, God is already on the scene. All we need, prophetess. Are some midwives. Come on, mother. Because you know something? A midwife got to know when to give you a sedative and when to tell you to push. You see, it, it, it's twofold. So sometimes we have to say a sedative. You got to take it easy a little bit. Just a little bit. Got to get you there till you get enough faith. But when you get enough faith, come on, mother, come on, mother. It ain't no time to take no sedative. Come on, mother. It ain't no time to drag around. Come on, mother. It's time to push. Come on, mother. Because there's something inside of you. Come on. And whatever's in you, my God says that he, he placed it there. Yes. He said, if you got a desire, I gave it to you. He said, if you got, if, if you got ministry, I gave it to you. If you got gifts, see, they're grace gifts. I mean, you don't even have to do anything. You just be born again and just love God with all your heart. Just begin to sell out to God. And he'll just crown you with stuff. My God. He knows how to do it. Yes, yes. So, through all the cancer, it taught us that we could stand in faith. Yes. In a dying situation. And see God resurrected. God has resurrected for us relationships. God has resurrected for us. Oh my God. He's resurrected principles that sometimes you thought you'd forgotten. Come on. God will remind you that I told you this. And prophetess, all we've got to do is to stand in faith and believe God. If he said it, he cannot lie. It's a promise. He's Jehovah Jireh. Trust in God. Lean up to our own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. He said, and I'll direct your path. And I'll direct your path. Come on, somebody. Put so success is yours only because God had already given it to you before you ever had a body to house it. Mother, you know what? Before Betty Jean comes, there is such an anointing on you right now. I want you to turn around and look. Which, which, which camera? This camera, this camera, this camera. Send the camera, send the camera. Which camera? This one over here. I want you to look in that camera because when you said that, I felt the power of God in my belly. Look in that camera and tell some mother to stand the way you said, stand in faith yes. in a dead situation. Let God use you to say that because that's an anointing on you for that. Let me tell you something, mother. Maybe you thought that this was a, a hopeless situation. That you prayed and you cried and you walked the floor at night. 
But I'm here today to tell you that if you will go into the reservoir of your soul and your mind, that old shaya, and if you will pull up the word of God, stand in God's face, yes, and give him back his word. He said, I'll watch over to perform. You will see God bring in the way with child. You will see God heal that wounded marriage. You will see God stand. All I'm telling you to do when you've done all that you know how to do, stand therefore with your loins girt with truth. And you see your loins in your loins. You brought forth those children out of your loins. And God has promised that he will take care of your seed. So I pray for you this morning. You lady that's sitting on that couch right now. You rubbing your hands and you thought that it was all over. I'm here today to tell you it's not over. Because the Bible says we're two or three. We're gathered together in the midst. And you see, it's more than two or three of us in here. And you may be by yourself, but all of us are with you. And we stand in faith that whatever you're praying for, you got it. You got it. You got it. Come on. You got it. Betty Jean is coming. Betty Jean. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, my son. No, 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 no. My God. Betty Jean is coming. Let us pray for our children. I'm telling you that God is commissioning you right now to stand in faith in a dead situation. I'm telling you the spirit of the Lord is in this place right now. Right where you are, lift your hands up and praise God in the face of the enemy. Come on, give him a praise in here tonight. That is Jean is coming. Let us pray for our children. Oh, put your hands together for Betty Jean as she comes. Come and lay them on the altar one more time. Tell Satan, you can't have my children. They are mine. He can't Come and lay them on the altar one more time. 
joined in tonight I'm telling you we are having an awesome time in the presence of the Lord with the mothers of Zion and I'm telling you if you've done everything that you know to do just like Betty Jean just said let us pray you pray for your children and earlier today I want to remind you that the release date in the stores on October the 20th will be Judy Jacobs' new CD, Above and Beyond. What can I say? What can I say? Awesome, awesome woman of God. That song has been blessing me for the last couple of days in his presence. Because why? There's nothing that God won't do if you get in his presence. Also on that CD, Judy and I are singing a song together. And it's going to surprise you, but I know that it's going to bless you. And I'm telling you that the anointing of God is on it. She gave me a sneak uh, uh, a preview of it. And I've been planning and planning. And when I came in here, I was telling them, Mighty God. And, and uh, Jamie, her husband, was like, well, you know, Mighty God on her tape. And I'm like, it is Mighty God. I know it's Mighty God. I was all strong and wrong. And it wasn't Mighty God. <laughs> It was, it was in his presence, so my bad, it is in his presence, and certainly the Lord has done that because we all know that Judy is an anointed woman of God. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. My next guest, um, I don't have enough space to introduce her. I really don't. I don't have time. I mean, it would take me for the rest of my life to be able to introduce um, this next guest, but I'd like to welcome, uh, have the TBN family to help me welcome my own mother, my mother in Zion, my own mother, Mother Bynum. Yes. Amen. Amen. My mother is here with me, and mom, okay. Boy, this is loaded, this is loaded, this is loaded, because I don't even know where to start with you, because, I mean, it's just so much. But this is what I want to ask you. Um, what was your principle? We're going back to that again, the principle of raising godly children, the guarantee that if we use the principle that Dr. Swenson was talking about. And by the way, um, Dr. Swenson's information is coming up on the screen. You talking about a powerful woman of God. You need to have her to minister at your church because that woman has an anointing to minister concerning standing in the gap for a dead situation. She's a powerful woman of God. Her information is right there on the screen. Mother, that is a principle that we know that do work. And I want to know... Uh, in your own way, what, what was the thing that you held on to with us now that uh, you're in a position to be able to testify that all five of your children are now saved and wasn't always that way? Wasn't always that way. Can you, can you tell the audience what was your principle when we were growing up? I mean, besides being just whooped to death, what was your other principle? What was your God-given principle? 
Because I'm telling you, I have never seen anybody that will open the Bible and read it with coffee while the belt is laying there. And you'd be like, would you just come on and whoop me? And my mother used to say, I, I, can't, I can't whoop you. I got to get under the anointing. She said, because I want you to know I'm driving a spirit out of you too. So mother, tell us, tell us. She had to roast me first. <laughs> but my principle was the word of God mm -hmm. and the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. If you have the power of prayer and the word of God in your life, you can handle whatever it, it takes. So I love the devil out of every one of them. Sometimes they thought that I would always have to beat them. But the most frightening thing with them, they seen the belt, they seen the switch, and they was afraid. But we must train up a child the way he should go. Yes. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Yes. And so when they thought they was old and they thought it was time for them to depart, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work because what she said was the belt was laying there. It was laying there. And it was a real belt, too. That's right. But I also took them to Sunday school. Sunday school is the greatest school in the world. And it wasn't their choice to go to Sunday school. But at that time, we didn't have a car. And we lived on one side of the town, and the church was on the other side of the town. But we took the bus, and we made it to Sunday school on time. On time. That's right. Because I felt like if I could put the word down in them, that word would lead and guide them, just like you guide the stern wheel of your car. You know, when they, when they think they're going wrong, yes, yes. They, they probably would hear my voice saying, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. And you're going to get it. And they know what that meant. So I thank God for all five of mine. Because the way I raised them, I don't think they were always happy about it. But I felt like my five children was my greatest missionary field. Come on, Mama. Come on. The greatest. Come on. Uh-huh. Teach that. See, a lot of people want to go and preach to everyone else. And when you come back, your, your house is full of demons. Come on, Mama. Uh-huh. So I realized that in the beginning was God. Mm -hmm. ah. and, I, and I thank God that he allowed me to nurture them. Yes. I didn't ever have a babysitter. They can't ever remember knowing that they had any kind of babysitter but who they call me, Cat. Because I know that I can babysit minds better than anyone can. Come on, Mama. So we can't just... Lay them to the side and say, I'm going to the store, I'm going here, I'm going there, and just sit right here until I come back. No, I took them with me. I knew where they was. I knew what they was doing. And when they wasn't with me, I knew in my spirit something was going wrong. So what I would do is question them. What happened today? They all get scared. Oh, wh what about it? What about it? You tell me what about it. I want to know what happened today. And prophet look at me like she's looking at me now. <laughs> when I said what happened today, they all get afraid because they know they was into something they didn't have any business into. So when you raise up a child the way he should go, when he's old, he would not depart from it. That means you have to put something down in that child. Yes. They can't be the mama and the daddy. Come on, mama. If we the mama and the daddy, we better stay the mama and the daddy. Come on, mama. When they got taller than I was, I said, that's all right. I can look up at you. And this same backhand lick right here can reach you. Come on, mama. I said, we put the word down in you first. And when you go wrong, I put the belt on your back. There's a lot of people, they say, well, you can't whoop your children because they'll put you in jail. I said, well, put me in jail. Because I bought a pain. And they daddy tilt the soda. Glory Come to on, God. Mama. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hey, 
bless him. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Because he's real. Yes, he is. God is real. Yes, he is. And there's no playing in the house. Come on, mama. Uh-huh. And I went away and I said, well, you know, you all kind of up now and you, you in the upper grade. So I'm going da 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 and uh, I'll be back. I came back. They thought that I was going to be gone a long time. So they moved my furniture around. And they, and they called in their friends. And all they was having a jam in my house. It's a hot pants on. <laughs> and you know, I didn't allow them to wear hot pants. Y'all know what hot pants is. And they had on their hot pants where they found from somewhere. And they had on the little halter thing that go around here. And the music was just a-going. I said, what in the world is going on in my house? So I just eased on around the side of the house, went on in my bedroom, and just sit there. And this one, she came to the door and told them, Mama is here. They said, oh, neither you lying. Mama not here. Come on, y'all. We're going to do this one more time. She said, I declare Mama is here. <laughs> they made big old naturals. You know what naturals are, don't the you? Afro. Way back there, the, the, the Afro stuff. Uh -huh. they, they took their hair down, honey, and they put all that on. And they had all the little high pants stuff. One of them was just so out of it. She had her hot pants on, sitting on top of the counter. I said, now, I trained up the child the way he should go. Come on, mama. I said, now he acting like he want to depart from what I trained him. So I'm going to help you. <laughs> I'm going to help you. My God. So I said, put all the furniture back. Put it all back. So I came in like I was going to eat. I laid my Bible down in front of me and just sit there. Just sit there. And I said, put, put it all back the way you found it. It can't be not a stitch away from where I had it at. That's right. And they said, oh, we're going to get a whooping. I said, you know it. But you have to keep the hot pants on. Get that naked feet. Uh -huh. Because when I trained them up the way they should go, come on, mama. And they wanted to depart from it. I want to let them know what a real whooping means. That's right. He said, Mama, I swear we ain't gonna do it no more. I said, that's all right. You can leave the swear there. But when I get through burning your hips, you're gonna be all right. They said, well, you just, did you raise your children up just to beat them all the time? I said, no, we went to Sunday school. We had, we had Sunday school at home. We had Bible training at home. Come on. And I trained them all different kinds of ways. My husband and I took them different places they wanted to go. And I wondered why. Why do you want to go the way you want to go? They said, well, my friends, my friends do this and they do this and their mama says, okay. I said, well, that's their mama. Come on, That's mama. not Teach your mom. Teacher. You can't go to church and shout and turn over the benches and do everything you want to do and, and speaking in somebody's tongues and leave your children by themselves doing what they want to do. Come on, mama. It won't work. Come on, mama. Ah. It won't work. We have to do it the God kind of way. Come on, mama. And if we don't do it the God kind of way, we get a whoop. And when that word says train up the child the way he should go, come on, mama. They're going the way they should go in my house. Come on, mama. And so we want we want Susan to come spend the night with me. I said, no, I got to talk to Susan's mama. Because I don't know what Susan's mama is. Come on, mama. And nobody's going to come in my house and lay their heads on my pillow and spend the night and your mama don't know it. I always get quiet in here because some of y'all do that. Y'all let your little girlfriend We didn't spend the night. No spending the night from home. Oh, they was mad, but it didn't, it didn't matter. Because I had to have pain to get them here. And so let me continue to have pain to keep them here. That's right. Uh -huh. And you know, it's one out of the point. They have to do what they want to do. I said, go, you can go to the, to, to the park, 
but when you see the sun coming down, come on home with the bikes. Mama don't tell that story. <laughs> Mama. Come on home. Mama, don't tell they that story. They just stayed on out there and did what they wanted to do. Because they thought Mama was tired. And she didn't feel like whooping today. So I said, okay, they're not in yet. I stood on the porch because the park, I can see the park from my house. And they still didn't come. So I said, okay, I'm going to walk up the street a little piece. So she seen me. And she rode that bike so fast to the house. She got ready to go around the, around the side of the building to come in. I said, uh-uh, come straight through here. <laughs> come straight through here. But mama, the carpet is white. I said, that's right. It's white, but you better not let it touch my, my carpet. That wheel on that white bike better not touch my carpet. She was scared to death. But I said, all right, you getting the whooping. That's the last thing she wanted to hear, I'm getting the whooping. I said, well, why are you talking about that? She a grown woman now. Because a lot of people out there with children, they, their children is young, just like she was young. And, they, and some of them doing what they want to do. And it's no use going to church and shouting and jumping and your children at home doing what they want to do. Drinking a little liquor, smoking cigarettes, doing whatever they want to do. I can look them right in the eyes. I can look them right at the forehead right here. Well, what is it, Mama? I said, that's all right. Get that belt and bring it here. That's right. Because we prayed together. We read the scripture together. Then why do you want to go and do your thing? You know, when they grew up and they got older, they decided they wanted to go in the street. So I said, okay, all of you all, whatever you want to do, you think you're big enough to do it, go ahead. Go ahead on, go out there and find out what you're going to see, what you're going to hear, what you're going to know. You have to come back and do your first work all over again. Why you want to go out there? We just want to taste and see. That's what's happening now. People just tasting and seeing. But it's the wrong taste. Come on, mama. The wrong taste. Ah. I said, God, I thank you for my children being saved. Come on, mama. I thank you, Father. They all got the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, I just praise God. They were still cutting the monkey shine. And I kept on saying, thank you, Jesus. Come on, mama. Thank you for the preacher. Thank you for the reacher. Thank you for the evangelist. They said, you done lost your man. They not saved. I said, yes, they are. I said, the word told me to speak those things to be not. And so they were. Come on. So I'm just saying what they are. Thank you, Jesus. So I started saying, say what he said. Don't be trying to say what somebody else say. Say what he said. Come on, mama. I didn't have to say, God, turn him around. I didn't have to say that anymore. I just, I kept on thanking him for saving him. Come on, mama. I said, thank God for the preachers and the missionaries and, you know. I said, God, I thank you for him. And they said, mama, what? why are you thanking God and we not saved yet? I said, don't you know faith is the subject of things, hope but, and the evidence of things not seen? Huh. Come on, mama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I said, whatever that word says, that's what I'm going to say. And I said, you know what? God is honoring everything I say. But they kept on trying. Oh. When you stand in the gap. When you stand in the gap for your people. Come on, my God. God honors that. We can't take down. We must work the work of him that sent us while it's day. Because nighttime comes, you can't do nothing. But I said, God, I thank you for my whole crew. I thank you for who they are right now. I started labeling them all what they was going to be. And this one right here, I would make her come in the house and sit down. And she said, why well, I got to sit down? Everybody else is out there playing. I said, because you're going to go across the country one day. You're going across the country. I said, you, you're not a teenager yet. But I see you going there. I said, I'm going to be with you. Come on. Uh-huh. Come on, Mama. Glory to God. Stand on up. Hey. Stand on up. Stand on up. Hey. What the fuck are you trying to do? I'm going 
witch. Huh? I said, can't can nobody do us like God came. Can't nobody watch us like he came. Can't nobody stir us like he came. Glory to God. Hmm. They said, oh, you not worried about them? You talking about they out in the street? I said, worry is a sin. Either you gonna believe God or you gonna worry. You won't get anything out of worry. So I chose not to worry. I choose to say what God said. I said, you sanctify. You feel with the Holy Ghost. You are a worker for Jesus. And I won't take it back. Hallelujah to God. Oh, Jesus. Mm. And sometimes they think I was going to say a long prayer. I said, come on here, we're going to pray. And they come on in, I start saying, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. My God. And he come on in. He step on in. Hallelujah to God. Glory, 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 glory. He step on in. And when you know her, shut out of her. And when you know one thing, they, they was locked out. I said, can't nobody do you like that but God. Can't nobody do it like God. Can't nobody wash you clean. Can't nobody take you off a drug. Can't nobody take you off a liquor. Can't nobody stop you from lying. Come on, my But God, I can. He can do anything. He will never pay. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. If you're going to live for him, trust him. Sometimes the things look real bad. But I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Because I know it's already done. Thank you, God. Hey, bless him. Thank you, Jesus. I rely on the word of God. I say what he say. I go when he says go. When somebody says, can you come to preach for me? I say, if God tells me to come, I'll be there. But if you don't say me. I just praise him. Glory to God. Because he won't never fail. And we can't fail. And I thank God for my husband. And we raised them up the right way. Glory to God. And when they wanted to, you know, just going on out there, they found out it wasn't nothing out there. That's right, mama. And not a thing. Glory to God. And I thank God today that I don't have to go look for it. Come on, mama. Jesus. And that one right there, she would hide from me. See, I put on my white dress. I go up there where she was hanging out in the drug den. And I just walk around and sling my oil. In the drug house. Ah. In the drug house. In the drug I house. Slung my oil. I said, this would never be a drug house again. And they had a big old hotel and, and folks went in it. And I stepped over there and I said, and, and this won't never happen again. It's coming down. They won't have nowhere to go, God. Because oh, I know you're under my words. Because I live for you, Jesus. And she backed up in the door and she said, that's my mama, she crazy. I said, that's right. I'm a fool for Christ. I do whatever he said do. Glory to God. But he shut it down. When he said, go. I go. When he said, come, I come. But you know, when I went back up on the 79th Street, I seen him tearing down the building. Oh. Glory to God. I seen him tear down the whole thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I told God, I said, God, spare this one girl. Spare her. Because she's going in every crack in every corner. And it was a man that was killing young ladies. And she was in that house too. Yes. But God, I said, but God, he heard me. Glory to God. He had a tie to a radiator. That's right, he had him. Uh -huh. He caught well, he my sister. He thought the radiator was going to 
Boy, no. But somebody else came along and said, what you doing here? A you mother buying them daughter. They snatched that thing off of her. My God. Don't tell me what God won't do when you are praying, mother. Glory to God. If you can just pray. Come on, mama. You will stay. If you can just fast with your feet now. Hallelujah. You can make it. I said you can make it. They said, you're not sad? I said, for what? I was driving from Pastor Tom's house in a snowstorm. And I was just driving, trying to get home. It was a faraway place. And I said, I'll be home after a while. And when I said that, the Holy Ghost reminded me, don't go that way, go this way. When I went that way, it, was, it wasn't on the expressway where I could have got home fast. But it was on the side street all the way from out there. And he guided me which way to go. When I hit the city limit, he said, go to 79th Street. He said, when you get to 79th Street, make a left. Then when you make that left, make a right. Honey, when I got through making all them lefts and rights and drove up in that area where, where she was, she didn't expect me again. A man was beating about the beat of the death. And I got out the car and I said, Jesus! Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. You worry about your children. Don't worry anymore. That's right, brother. Because worry is a sin. Get in that word of God. Say what he said. And speak those things that be not as though they were. Say, Susie is saved. Johnny is saved. He's not going to die. Oh, y'all. See, see, the doctor thought I was dead. To live. But they didn't know I knew a God that could do anything. Thank you, Jesus. I trusted him all the way. And when they said that, that was my last chance. I said, so it is? I said, I don't think so, because God ain't told me that. He didn't tell me that this is it. No, he didn't. Then they started kind of getting nervous. I said, that's all right. I'm here, and I'm going to stay here. Until he said, come on home. Come on. When you live it, you got all the things going on for you. Don't play church anymore. Because people now, they're playing church. We don't have time to play church. We better eat that word and digest it. We better learn that we know that we know that we know. That if you don't live holy, you're going to hell. Judy Jacobs is coming. My God. Y'all, we, we can stay here all night. Judy Jacobs is coming. Would we'll let the veil down and the praise go up. And I'm telling you in this place tonight, thank you, Lord. Tonight's program is Mothers in Zion. And I'm so glad tonight that God has given me a praying mother. And before this program is over, Mother Graham is coming. She's going to pray for you. She's going to minister. I'm telling you, the anointing is in this place right now. Come on, put your hands together for Judah Jacobs. Let the veil down. Let the praise go up. Hanging before you, sacrifice of God. We worship you, Lord. We lift your name up higher, holy in this room tonight. And now we can go in. We can enter in. Let the veil down. Let the prayer. Stand to your feet, come on. Let the veil down, let the praise go. Do it. 
begins to tell you that your son and your daughter has been exed out of the kingdom the devil is a liar in this house tonight we are declaring that we're going to let the veil down so the praises of the Lord go up why because we're going to praise God in advance because we believe God we believe every word that he says don't you dare turn that channel we're in for a mighty mighty treat mother Graham is coming in just a few minutes and she's going to minister the word of the Lord and right before she come Betty Jean is coming back to do one of my favorites my Savior's precious blood why don't you put your hands together TBN and give her a good God bless you right after Betty Jean it's going to be Mother Graham. Come on, put your hands together for the woman of God. Jesus Christ. 
stood one day and he taught the multitude, saying, Take no thought what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or yet for your clothes what ye shall put on. He said, Life is more than this. He said, Look at the little birds that fly. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And oh, you're so much more precious than they. He said, By worrying, can you add a moment to your life? Take no thought about what you're going to wear. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil and neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these little flowers. So don't be worried about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. But the Lord said, Your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of all these things already. But then he said, Little flock, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these other things shall be added unto you. I'll watch him provide for my call. I remember when the babies were hungry, a neighbor came and the groceries, they were free. I remember when I needed a doctor, the great physician paid a visit. And my father knows what I need. He knows what you need, honey. My father knows what I need. So I'll just stand by and watch him. My father knows what I need. For the Bible said that he knows what you are in need of even before you ask. And now this is a moment that all of us have been waiting for. Many of you have called in. You have written in requesting that we would bring this powerful woman of God back to the TBN network. And the Lord has certainly provided because he knows what we need. And I'd like for everybody in this audience tonight to stand to your feet and receive this honorable woman of God, Mother Graham. Come on, put your hands together for her. Preach, Mother. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads and go to the throne of grace. Our Father and our God, whom our soul takes all this delight, we give you praise tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor because you are altogether lovely. We thank you for your divine presence in this room right now. 
We thank you for the word that has already been preached and taught tonight, God. Because you are touching the hearts of men and women and you're touching the hearts of people tonight that think that there is no hope for them. But there is hope for them because you said for this reason was Jesus manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So anoint the word that you have placed on the inside of me. Let it overflow and be a blessing to God's people tonight. And all the praise and all the glory and honor shall be given to you because you're not chiseled out of stone. You're not carved out of wood. Neither are you fashioned out of gold or silver. But you... You are the almighty God, and for that we give you praise. Everybody, just give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over the building. Amen. You may be seated. I give honor tonight to the presence of the Lord. I think I shouted my sound off. Praise God. We give honor to the presence of the Lord. We certainly do honor prophetess Juanita Bynum. And to all of the precious mothers in Zion that came on before me, Mother Bynum and Dr. Swain, I believe it is, Swenson, thank you so much. And I enjoyed their testimonies and the word that came forth from them. All of those words are true. And I have some experience in some of the same testimonies uh, that they have brought forth to you tonight because it seems that God, I mean the enemy, loves to attack the saints' children. And I want you to know every child that is attacked of the saints, that means that that child really has the goods. That's, that's the one that's just as anointed as they can be. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so I'm going to come in this wise. Lord had laid my heart. I want to say to you, I thank you for your overwhelming uh, response from the last time we were on the program uh, because it was just so in such volumes that your emails came in. Uh, I am still working on trying to answer every last one of them. I've been reading them, praying over them. Some of you I reached out to. Uh, we thank God for TBN. We thank God for Paul and Jan Crouch. And we are praying continuously for the healing of her body. And we miss you, Jan, if you're out there and you hear it. We really miss you. We want to see you coming back on the program on a daily basis like you used to be able to. This is a wonderful network that has given itself to causing the gospel to go around the world. And believe me, when they say around the world, they mean it literally. I've heard from around the entire world. So if you'll just be a little patient with me out there in television land, we will get answers back to you. Uh, the web page will be up and running properly like it needs to be. Products are being produced now because many of you have asked for that. I want to say this because the Holy Ghost is probably going to kick in in a few minutes and we're going to be on our way as I have seen it already. It is stirred in here. These precious women of God have stirred it up in here tonight. I'm having a one-day conference. If you want to find out about it, come to the web uh, page, www.shirleygram.org, and it will tell you uh, when and where. It's no, no charge for it. Many of you asked about being mothered and how to pursue God's will. So I'm having a day of teaching about how to pursue God's will for your life. I'll be preaching uh, evangelist Marlene Simmons and great intercessor and my own daughter, Anita Graham Phillips, will be preaching. And I'll do another wrap-up scene and then we'll just anoint you with all. And when we all get up off the floor, we can go home. Amen? All right. If you have your Bibles, turn it with me to first. Samuel, the first book of Samuel. And for time's sake, I'm going to start in the second verse. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peniah. And Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. First Samuel, first chapter. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two, and the two sons of Eli, Hopni, and Penes, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkaniah offered, he gave to Peniah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept 
and did not eat. Then said Elkaniah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in, in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaiden and remember me and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. And Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunk. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drank neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Beel, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. This is a scripture in the word of the Lord that God laid upon my heart. As I begin to seek the Lord to speak on this program tonight after I was informed, I thank God so much for prophetess. And, and what a fantastic host she is to these shows and all of the precious shows that she brings to the people of God. And I want to tell you, you just need to get on a plane and a train, and you need to come to that 5 a.m. prayer over there in Queens because I have never seen anything like it, the outpouring of God's Spirit. And I want you to know every one of the precious women of God that came before me all talked about prayer because that is where it starts at. If you are going to get anything accomplished in your life, if you're going to take back those things that the devil has stolen from us, then it's going to come through prayer. But anyway, getting down into the scripture, when, I, when the Lord directed my, my mind to the scripture, and, and my subject is tonight, I want everybody to take your right hand or your left hand, which hand you use, and put it on your belly. And this is male or female because all of us can partake in this. Say, Lord. Make me, pregnant. make me pregnant. Amen. 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 Praise God. Just make me pregnant. In the spirit realm, praise God with souls into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Gloria. God, as I begin to look into the scripture and I looked at how the story Samuel, the book of Samuel starts off talking about Hannah rather than Samuel at first, talking about the condition under which Hannah had to live. But you have to go back to really understand First Samuel. You need to read Judges and to see there the condition that the earth was in at that particular time. Judges brings us to a place to understand that there were many judges and Samuel ending up being the last of those judges because from the time that Joshua, Moses and then Joshua, and after Joshua came judges into effect, they were kind of like the magistrate or sheriffs over the period of time. And they ruled and what God would do as Israel would involve herself with the heathen nations that were around them and they would start walking away from the things of God. God would cause a nation to rise up to whip them back into the place that God wanted them to be. Doesn't it kind of sound like us today? And so every time God would do that, God would raise up a judge. And they were, all of them were men with the exception of one. And so when this thing happened, they didn't necessarily fight right or fair, and they weren't people that always used spiritual authority. They, they worked off the gifts that were inside of them, Samson being one of them who was constantly pulled aside by the lust of his flesh. God had given this man such a supernatural strength until, in my mind, I don't believe he was someone that looked like the rock 
that was walking around flexing the muscles as some of the people we would see that are pumping iron. I believe he was an ordinary man that God would just work a wonder in, wherein when the time and the occasion came, God would just rev up in the, the muscles and the electrical impulses of his muscles. And Samson was able to pick up the gates of a city and carry them outside of the city. Now those gates, I did a little research on them, they were five stories high. And they were solid wood in the middle and overlaid with iron on the outside and the inside. And just for jest, Samson picked them up and ran away with them. You had some judges that were so skillful from the tribe of Benjamin who were, had so many people that were left-handed. But they could take a dagger and throw it in a heartbeat and hit the mark. And this one did so also to free Israel. Now in those days, because they did what they wanted to, the Bible ends up with the book of Judges and says that everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And so now God is looking at the condition, seeing that judges are about to fail. And God has times and seasons that he changes things to bring about order. And also he was working continuously towards bringing the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so God had to set up the Davidic order. And so here is a woman who does not have children. She comes in the beginning of this book with a story of Elkaniah, her husband, who loved her so very dearly. And he had two wives because Israel did what they wanted to. So they pr practiced polygamy even back in those days. And so here he goes and he talks to her and tells her, why are you so grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? But yet there was a burning desire on the inside of her to bring forth a child. And so she began to seek the Lord. The Bible does not tell us how many years that she grieved and prayed before the Lord for a child to be born. But she also had an enemy that was relentless against her, who was Paniah, who constantly assaulted her with insults and threw off at her because she was barren. Now, according to every young Jewish woman in those days and even to this day, Women that could not have children seemed to have been accursed. And every woman in those days wanted to bring forth children. And I am convinced that is one of the reasons that in this day and time that we are living in, that the devil has allowed for uh, uh, the abortions to be instituted and, and at the accelerated rate that they are, not because you, for any uh, 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 sick problem or anything of that nature, but now people use abortion as a form of birth control after a while they'll just take the child out now they suck them out and suck the brains out and do all of those kind of horrible things to that poor little person when the bible says that life is in the blood and so anyhow the enemy wants to get rid of our children today and families are not wanting to have children because god's inheritance is in our children and so God knows, and the devil tries to put the blood in the sewers of the prophets of today and the pastors of today and the halfway house workers of today down the sewers with abortion, but I don't have time to deal with that. And so now as she begins to seek the Lord, and pray and cry that God would give her a child so she would not feel accursed and not have to be ashamed every time Paniah would go past her with her sons and her daughters flaunting at at her and I want you to know today you don't have to feel bad because the enemy is trying to make you feel bad because God has a moment a day and a time when God is going to flip the script on everything that the devil has been trying to do to you hallelujah to God I, I don't have time to go in all the notes that I've written for this but let me just go the short way Eli means, I'm sorry, Eli means Jehovah is high. And Samuel's name means heard of God. There had to be a change in the religious system of what was going on at that time. And so God always has a purpose in what seems to be a bad situation for you. God could have given uh, a Hannah a child the first time she prayed and cried. But there was a season and a time for which God wanted a child to be born. And then I want to touch it in this wise. While she was seeking God and crying out before the Lord. And when Eli saw her in the temple. And he spoke to her and accused her of being drunk. 
I never really understood that until I researched it. Because people were so wicked in that day until it was not uncommon for a woman to come or a man to come to offer sacrifice and pray before the Lord and be cold drunk. And it is not that much different in our society today. Now she was crying out, but she was not drunk. She wasn't ordinary. And what a sad situation it is that the priest of the temple had lost his sight, his spiritual insight enough that he thought she was literally drunk with intoxicating wines as to being a woman of intercession and of a sorrowful spirit. And as she began to cry and she told him, no, my Lord. But she didn't get mad with him, even though he didn't have spiritual insight anymore because he had grown old and allowed these two horrible sons, Hopna and Phinehas, priests before the Lord. One of them's name means a strong boxer or fighter. And the other one's name means a serpent's mouth. They had been sitting there holding the office of the priest. And we know over in Leviticus it talks to us that a priest before the Lord should have his right ear anointed, his right thumb anointed, and his right big toe anointed so that one can hear from God do the works of God and walk in the way of God. But there was no walking in the way of God in those days. And so Eli sat and turned his head to the side and did not really get down on his sons about the cruel way that they conducted themselves as preachers before God. We're living in a time where now people are preaching and living like hellions. This is not what is pleasing in the sight of God. They were taking the meat that they should not have taken at the time that it was taken. These were peace offerings and also offerings for sin. What they were doing was stealing the peace of Israel because they were taking that which did not belong to them. And also, it also shows how they were in love with the almighty dollar. And I want you to know, yes, prosperity is of God, but holy living comes before prosperity. Hallelujah to God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and money will be added, and cars will be added. That is not the thing that you are to seek God for. And so God sat and watched and grieved in his heart as Eli allowed his ungodly sons to operate. And as it, a result of that, the man of God, a prophet from God, came. And I want you to know one of the things that God is doing today is bringing back the office of the prophet, the true prophets of God, people that are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and seeking God with all hearts and their minds. You need to lose yourself from the ungodly people because sooner or later God's going to strike that place. He's going to hit the place of wickedness with his judgment. God sent the word to Eli and told him, I'm going to kill your sons in one day. And he also died. He pronounced a curse upon him two times. I don't have the time tonight, but I'm here to tell you in the church world today, everything is about to turn around. Everything is about to change. There's a new order in town. There is a generation of people that love that God has called for this final hour. Just let me get a couple of more points in. I want you to know in here tonight that almost all of us, no one will ever collect your insurance policy because we are so soon to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that the church was born in power in the book of Acts and the church is going out in power again. No more of this stuff where we just rev the crowd up, get them hollering and screaming. But honey, if worship is not in your heart, it's not pleasing to God. Hannah, Hannah understood the social ills of her day, the religious ills of her day. 
And so Hannah began to seek God. She was well informed because when you read her song, which is similar to the song of Mary, she talks about the strong and the power of God. And so Hannah sought God. Now I want you to know God's getting ready to birth something in all of you. Yes, he is. That's why the enemy is so relentlessly coming against you and fighting you. Fighting you over here. Fighting you in your marriage. Fighting you in your children. Fighting you on your jobs. Fighting you in your churches. Trying to make you give up. Oh, America. America. We are so spoiled. We got three and four closets of clothes. Whole closets of shoes. We got two and three, four cars. And you're not satisfied. You haven't brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. God is looking for someone that will say, Lord, make me pregnant. I've got to bring forth life. If I don't win a soul, I need to die. Hannah got hungry. Hannah stayed before God. As she cried and she prayed, the yokes were broken. The curses were broken. Oh, those things. I brought three children into this world and carried three children full term. There were foods that I couldn't eat. There were things that I couldn't do. Thank God for the older saints, the mothers in Zion. My mother wouldn't let me watch anything horrible on television. She wouldn't let me look at anything strange. She said, you're training your child now. I want you young women out there wherever you are. You husbands and wives in the church shouting on Sunday and boxing on Sunday night. When your wife is pregnant and you woman, you need to love yourself. When you're losing your temper and having a fit, you're bringing those demons of rage to your children. You're bringing those curses of evil to your children. Hannah stayed before God. She prayed. She fastened and sought God. She said, give me a child. Give me a son. And I'll give him back to you. That's the reason I'm standing here preaching tonight. My mother, Mother Frances Wilkins, in heaven right now, prayed for 18 years to become pregnant. And they told her she would never have a child. She said, God, give me a girl. I want a girl with a head full of hair. And she, at the end of 18 years, she became pregnant they told her we got to abort this child because you won't live and the child won't live my mother said if God gave her to me then God is going to let her live and God's going to let me live my mother lived to be 95 and I am here 60 years of age God gave her her desire well why did I have to come after 18 because God had a season to break through for women preachers. He had to send me in churches where they never had women before. I had to kick those doors open when the trustees said no and the people voted yes. God has a reason. Samuel had to come because he was going to be a prophet, a priest, and he was going, he was an intercessor also. And he was a judge. And so his season had not come. But I'm telling you here tonight, your season is waiting on you. Your season is looking you in the face. Everything that the devil stole from you.
in praise while I talk to you in television land. God's going to pay you back. Come on, on, on. Everything you've been through, on, on, on. God's getting ready to pay you back. Seek it. Seek it while it may be found. Seek the Lord. Call upon him while he is near. Hey! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Everyone, take that hand. Those of you in India, those of you in Switzerland, say, Lord. a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P, 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. Tell him what thus saith the Lord. God wants to empower you to break yokes and to break bondage. Say yes. 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 This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, I, from Holy Temple Church of God in Christ in South Toms River, New Jersey, Evangelist Shirley Graham. Evangelist and teacher from Chicago, Illinois, Catherine Bynum. Teacher and co-founder of Faith Temple Ministries and Oasis of Love Ministries from Jacksonville, Florida, Dr. Johnny Swinson. With special music by recording artists Benny Jean Robinson and Judy Jacobs. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners around America.
it is Juanita Bunga. Yes, 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 yes. Well, the glory of the Lord is already in this place. And if you just tuned into the program tonight, you are in for a treat, 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 treat tonight. And I often say that many of us, uh, we've been born and raised in the church, and, and some of us have been trying to have church, but I don't believe that there's anybody that knows the Lord like a mother in Zion. And so several uh, months ago, we had a broadcast here, and we were doing a special on the making of a bishop. And we were so honored to have uh, Mother Graham with us. And we got so many phone calls in our office, even in the TBN office, requesting that when are we going to have just mothers in Zion to come and speak to our hearts. And so after TBN prayed about it and we talked about it, even when the broadcast was over, I had even people that were behind the scenes, that worked behind the cameras to say, you know, how blessed they were by having Mother Graham on. And so the Lord just put together an awesome program for you. And my own mother, of course, awesome, awesome woman of God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. My own mom, uh, also uh, 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 Betty Jean, who I absolutely adore and love. I mean, the sweetest woman that you would ever want to meet. She is one of my all-time favorites. And I requested that we would have her because she's been such a blessing to the TBN family. And I know she's going to be a blessing to you also. And then we have Dr. Swinson uh, coming to us talking about how to stand in the gap for a child that the doctor said is dying. That's a woman of faith and power. And I know you're watching. Somebody's out there watching. And you have a child that the doctor has given up on. He said that there is no hope, but we have a woman of God here to let you know that the devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. There's nothing like a fight when you got a mother fighting for her children. And so we're just excited tonight, and we have my friend Judy Jacobs here, and, 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 and we're just going to be the young clan among the group. But Judy is coming now, and, and, and right now, I want everybody all over this auditorium, even there, sitting right where you are, we're about to enter into the presence of the Lord. This is a song that is one of my favorites off of Judy's new CD, Come On, We're In Your Presence. Come on, put your hands together for Judy Jacobs as she comes. presence, Lord, is all we need to know. 
tears will flow for joy is overwhelmed only in your presence yes it is only in your presence come on church in your presence oh most high our hearts cry begin to worship and we say holy Lord you're so holy mm, you're holy Lord God you're holy in this house and you're worthy Jesus oh you're so worthy In your presence. Oh God. You are the first and the last, the beginning of the end. You're the one who was dead, and behold, you're alive forevermore. And you have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And you're holy. Worship you. The book of 
Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The Bible said, and the angels cried one to another, holy unto the Lord. When they began to cry holy, the word of the Lord said, and the doorposts moved at the voice of those that cried out. And all over this building, all over this nation, the announcement this very hour, this very minute, is that God is holy. He is mighty. Oh, he is the all-sufficient one. And the question, along with the statement tonight, is there anything too hard for God? And the answer tonight is absolutely not. While you're sitting there watching this program tonight, I want you to reach way down in your spirit and grab a hold to your faith. Because sick bodies are going to be healed. Somebody's going to be delivered. Mother... Your prayers are not in vain. Victory is already yours because he's holy. He's holy. Come on in this audience. Turn one to another and cry. He's holy. to cry out holy. The doorpost in your life is moving. That sickness is moving. That cancer is moving. At the voice of one that cry holy. Come on for a few minutes. Everybody cry holy. Holy. Of Tanya and, and Rod and you have a son also that's, that's serving in uh, right. Iraq now. Right. And uh, uh, in the Michael. military. Yes. Michael. Yes. That's the Michael that we've been just, yes. just bombarding heaven about. Yes. The Michael that's going to preach in case he watches. That's right. Over there in Iraq. you going to preach. That's all your right. friends, you busted out now. <laughs> they all know there's a preacher yes. down in you. Yes. <laughs> so you uh, raised your children. Um, I was told you were one of those uh, uh, Cleaver families, Beaver the Cleaver families, that... Uh, <laughs> Kind of, because you know, we don't know nothing about it. At that time, we were watching PTL, but you were actually taking your family yes. to PTL during the summer right. on summer vacations yes. and staying not in the hotel part, but in the cabin part where there was no television and all of that. You know, what was that whole concept about? I mean, what was it that steered you in that direction with your children? Well, it's important to, for children to know the power and the release of the things that God placed inside of them. Mm -hmm. And many times, if they have mimicking, if they can see someone or in television, on television or whatever, sometimes they adapt those personalities. But sometimes when you pull them away from the extras and allow the 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 actual what God placed in them. Wow. Because Genesis 128 tells us that God empowered us. Mm -hmm. He blessed us and he empowered us with a fivefold charge. Wow. And, it, and it's our responsibility to acknowledge the fact that he told us to be fruitful, yes. to multiply, to replenish, yes. to to subdue and yes. to have dominion. Yes. And you can't teach that uh, uh, by, by just picking up uh, things and showing them. It has to be something that's on the inside of them. And they individually need to know that they are fruitful. So part of the thing that we really pushed with our children, all of them, they were individuals. Right. There was never, uh, I, I personally did not have a favorite. Mm. What, whoever needed me at the time that they needed me mm -hmm. is, 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 is where I was. Right. If, 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 if Michael needed me in, in such a way and that the other two did not, then I was all whatever Michael needed. Then now, I, now, 
Mother, Tanya said this to me, that uh, based upon what you're just saying, not only did you um, minister to the need of that particular individual, but you began to teach your children at an early age to get involved with the crises of that individual. Yes. You didn't allow them to become, Tanya said, isolated no. from the struggles of their brother or their sister. No. You made them a part of that. Right. But they had to be a part because it, with our family, if one hurt, then all of us hurt. Right. And, 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 and the, way, the way we really, and I think the way we really was able to implement that is that when one had a success, all of us had a success. And, and we, we would zero in. My, my husband was really one that he supported the children in whatever they were doing. Right. So if, if, if Tanya had uh, something at PTA or where we just all, we went. All of us she went. Was, she was really almost um, a part of the WNBA, I heard. Yes. That Tanya was an awesome, awesome basketball player. Yeah, both of them were Michael and Tanya. Uh, they were both uh, t captains of the team in high school. Uh, Tanya was a what you might call a Swenson made player because <laughs> Tanya did not have what it took to uh, be a player, but because my husband is such an avid teacher of basketball, mm -hmm. he took her left hand and she, he taught her how to follow through, to do the things. So there were principles taught in the, on, the basketball, uh, on the basketball court. So when even the children... Hold it! Hold it! Come on, Judy! Come on! Hold it! Come on, worship him all over this building! Come on. In your presence. In your presence. We cry for. 